I am not Yvonne's weed tucker. Um, Yvonne, as you uh, read in your program, um, was supposed to be in here. She was so excited when she told me she was invited, but she has health issues, and through the winter, it became obvious that travel was just going to be beyond her. Um, luckily, I live three and a half hours away from St. Louis, and I've been a friend of Yvonne's for oh, about 10 years or so. So um, it all kind of worked out at the end. Yvonne has made a presentation, and if you know Yvonne, um, there are 78 slides. <laughs> um, so what I thought we would do is we'll go through the slides because she had pretty much thought that you all would be reading the slides and probably wouldn't be listening to her. Um, I do have some information because I'm a little different from Yvonne. And um, I got some from this month's Goat Rancher. Um, I've got some figures as well as some other things. Plus, at the end of her presentation, um, we're going to talk about meat goat marketing, like actual meat going to the markets. And I've got a little different experience from Yvonne. Um, it wasn't the best experience, but I think from my mistakes, you will be able to learn. So, meat goats are great. Production can be hands-off. Well, if you compare it to um, a dairy or a layer facility or if you're raising vegetables for a farmer's market or CSA, yeah, because basically with meat goats, they're doing the work. They're raising the kids for you to turn and sell in a few minutes. Um, well, in a few minutes, a few months. Marketing, just raise your hand and then watch out. Well, this is kind of true and kind of not. If you're the only meat goat breeder in an area, once you're out there on the internet, whether you've joined um, a breeder society or your local meat goat association, you're gonna be on a list and you will get called. Um, a few meat goat facts. This is astounding that there is such a demand for goat meat in the United States that the average people just have no clue. And 1.8 million goats are being imported into the United States. And this figure, um, I think Yvonne said that uh, Ken McMillan actually said this is probably an under, um, underestimated and that's kind of like one of those weird find the hidden picture thing of goats. But that is a lot of goats. Um, I looked on the USDA. In the past 10 years, goat numbers for kids, kid crops, have been going down. But we've got this incredible demand. And 10 years ago, we were raising 2 million goats, and now we're down to um, 1.6 million. So it's like, what's going on? What's the problem here? We've got demand. People are selling out. And those goats could be earning us all that money. And we're not even tapping into the market. The 70,000 producers, that kind of takes into consideration people like me who might have had 12, 20, 30 goats up to the big people, what I call the big boys in Texas and out west who are running six, seven, ten thousand 10,000 head. But they're running it on arid land where they're putting like five goats per acre. They've got all that land out there. All the money, lots of money. Um, <laughs> Yvonne, and yes, we know, that's a lot of money. Um, I recently heard, um, I think it was from Dr. Frank, that there's a couple dairy farms in New England that are having to give up the, the dairy um, industry. They're starting to look into transitioning into meat goats. and even into confinement meat goat feeding. That's a whole nother idea, 
but anything to tap into the market. Um, Yvonne is trying to um, capitalize on the cute factor of her goats. She has started with Angora goats, she's transitioned to Spanish. Her goats have got that high dense cashmere that get them through those Montana winters. Um, you have already heard how goat <laughs> pellets are like the ultimate time release fertilizer. We put them in our compost pile, I'll put them on the asparagus and they're still there. I mean, it, it just doesn't break down. Whereas cow poo, I mean, it's just, it's everywhere. Um, goats cannot be hurt. Well, it depends. If you're having to bend over a bunch of goats and trim feet, you're going to be hurting by the end of the day. Um, you're going to find that there are uh, ergonomic ways to get around chores and a lot of things you can let the goats do by themselves. Um, yes, we know that goats have horns. Um, this actually could be a picture of one of my heifers. We raised um, Spanish goats and we still have Irish Dexter cattle and we don't do the pole genetics. We've got the traditional horn type and between the goats and the cows, they work out very well. Somebody already talked about hay rings and goats and cows and sheep, and the cows are definitely on the top of the picking order. Um, every now and then I might lose a kid being flung by a cow um, if they get in the hay ring or something, and so we've kind of learned feed the goats in one area, feed the cows in another. Yes, it is. Now the how and why. Um, you've already heard today. I feel like I'm batting clean up, just kind of hitting all the high points. Working with nature, there's no reason to reinvent. Well, there is a reason to reinvent the wheel. Um, but if you kind of think about the way that deer and wild ruminants reproduce, they breed in the fall and winter, they have their young in the spring when the grass is growing, then mom can wean them off in the summer, and you're ready to go again. And then you've got all that weeds and brush, and they cost money to control. Yes, we know. That's Yvonne. Um, and we've already heard from people, if you've been in the other two um, breakout sessions, about using goats to make your farm better. And this is one way where if you incorporate the meat goats, it's only going to Im um, improve your pastures, clean up your fences, and if you want to let your neighbors pay for you to put your goats on their land to clean up their weeds, well, your goats are benefiting, then that's super. Um, I asked Yvonne what this was, and she, she uh, said it was a thistle. That's spotted mallow. It's what? Spotted mallow. Well, that's what I thought. And um, we had spotted knapweed on our farm when we first moved here uh, 12 years ago, and I, I haven't seen it. And we had a few Canadian thistles, but my husband was very um, diligent and uh, dug them up when he could. Um, but just the way they go through and clean kudzu, poison ivy, multiflora rose, um, the Siberian raspberries, butt brush. I mean, they just go nuts. And people want to eat the goats. And the USDA had some information about goat meat. And some people had said, well, um, I, I don't know, you know, I wouldn't eat a goat. And it's like, well, goat meat is the number one red meat for the world. It has 122 calories in a three ounce portion. Compare that to uh, 245 for beef. So it's half the calories of beef. Uh, the fat grams, you've got uh, 16 grams of fat and 2.58 in the goat meat. 
and that's even less than chicken. The potassium is higher in goat meat, the sodium is lower, and as far as protein, it's on par. Well, at least that's what the USDA said. Um, goat meat is delicious. There was a lot of talk today about sustainability and self-sustaining uh, self and profitable. However, it has been mentioned again, and I will um, kind of emphasize this. When you put goats out in an area to clear, you've got to watch it because they can overdo it. And if you need that area to feed your goats at a time in the future, you better pull them out before they kill it. Um, we had 18 acres of woods. We put the goats in there, didn't think much about it, took them out, and it took two years for enough understory to come back. Oh, it was great. I mean, you could look through all those trees, and nothing could hide in the woods, but there just really wasn't anything there for the goats. I'm not sure what she meant about this picture. Um, so let's pretend you're a normal sized person who's just normally strong. You might even be a single person. Um, I've already heard uh, at least twice today, so I'm gonna ask you, what is the average age of a farmer in the United States as of last year? 58, that is just crazy. And so goats really are a very good way if you're trying to segue out of a more labor intensive um, agribusiness or if you're just thinking about starting something new. Um, really, if you can bend over without too much difficulty and uh, tend to your goats, there's no reason why you couldn't add a few or a lot. Consider that. Um, and I think that we all want to treat our animals as ethically and kindly as possible. Um, we're not in it out there to be cruel. You don't need to own land. Um, I don't know if this one is do someone doing contract grazing out there, you know, if it's like BLM type grazing or if they're renting their goats. Um, but you want to benefit and solve the problem. And yeah, there's always somebody out there. Um, the only um, thing I can think that who wouldn't want to do this are the people who get the fancy little tractors and they get no other joy than to drive around on their pastures and make them look like the Kentucky horse farms and everything, and then they wonder, well, you know, my animals are just not getting enough out there. And it's like, well, yeah, you're cutting it. So how do we get goading? Um, yeah. Buy a business, build a business, or expand your agribusiness already. And if you've already got a farm or land of some sort and you're thinking about getting into meat goats, you know, you don't have to go out and order 200 head from a ranch in Texas and get these 200 little wild yearlings. Um, you can start with um, just a handful and you don't even really need to have a buck. You can, you know, get some bred dolings or yearlings, let them have kids and then gradually expand. And like the first year you'll get like 1.5 kid crop next year 1.75 and as the nannies get older the does the chances of twinning will increase and your goat numbers will like grow exponentially yes you cannot expect your goats to be totally handoff you're going to have to you know watch them goats will find 12 million ways to kill themselves um, just because they get bored and they don't have anything else to do. But you've got the sweat equity, you've got labor. And here's more Yvonne slides. 
Um, goats are cute, and I think this is where the people, um, a lot of um, people in some areas, they, they just can't imagine eating a goat. They get them when they're little, they're bouncing, they're so cute. They jump on stuff, they climb rocks, trees. Pretty much wherever you don't want a goat to jump, they're going to jump. And that's a goat looking for a way to, well. Um, when our cows are out in the fields, the little kids will go and they'll like bounce from one cow to another and the cows don't care. Um, there's a, a warning about this. If you've got a livestock trailer or a flatbed trailer and your goats have access to that trailer, you can pretty much kiss your wiring lights goodbye. Um, the goats are going to go in there, they're going to chew on the wires, they're going to wind the trailer down because they can do that. And um, the tire stems on the tires, they're going to chew them. So the time you need to go up there and get your trailer out of the goat pasture, um, good luck. Uh, so just a warning, keep your trailers away from your goats, we've learned. Um, bending over to trim feet, if you can let your goats help you with this, this is of great benefit. Um, anything that's somewhat of an abrasive, if you've got um, a gravel road, if you've got a central watering area and you can put gravel around it, some real rough stuff, limestone or something to trim their feet, any kind of cement, I mean, it's like you put steps out there and a goat is going to go up. They just, it, it, they, they're possessed. They have to go up there. Um, well, yeah, predators. I do have um, a couple 11-year-olds, and they come up to me and they report, and they tell me what everybody else is doing as far as the goats. But yeah, it's, it's generally not like this. <laughs> All you need is, Yvonne is a little optimistic, thinking one buck can cover a hundred, and maybe they could if they were Spanish and you had some younger bucklings. Generally, I would probably double that buck number. Um, and if the buck was younger, I, I might kind of increase that number a little bit. And two, three, or four, um, every now and then you'll have the yearling who will have one, and it's like they, they look at this thing that they've dropped, and it's like they walk away. Um, somebody else said they give the goats the three strikes, you're out. Um, generally, if it's with a yearling, you just might need to you know, put them in a quiet place, let them bond, and they figure it out. Quads, I have not had to um, experience, but I have had goats have triplets. Generally, it's an older goat. Goats can learn to count to three, and I've had goats raise triplets very successfully, even though they only had two teats. 90 days seems to be a common weaning for meat goats, 90 to 100 day kid weight. Um, when our kids are born, I'll put them in a five gallon bucket with a little digital fishing scale and I'll weigh them and I'll ear tag them. Used to be you could get free scrapey tags, not anymore. Um, but I'll keep track of how much the goats, the kids weigh at 90 to 100 days We'll weigh them again, subtract that birth weight, divide it by the number of days, and come out with an average daily gain. That lets us know, um, especially if I'm going to be selling a buckling for premium over a buckling that's just going to market, I can say, oh, but look, this kid was a triplet and he still gained over half a pound a day. 
and we don't creep feed. Our farm's 100% grass fed, so to have something like that, the more numbers you have available to you will help you when you market your goats. Well, un unless you keep your goats, because I think they would nurse for a long time. So in Yvonne's pretend world, you would um, have summertime being your time to take the kids to market. Traditionally, uh, the prices for goat kids slumped in the summer, and this was the summer slump, and it was a significant slump. You would have premium prices, yes, uh, okay, at New Year's and Easter, and then 4th of July, prices would bottom out, not so much anymore. Um, last month at Jeff City, 40 to 60 pound kids were selling for $2 to 277. At Diamond over um, on the west side of the state, it was 250 to 335 a pound. San Angelo, Texas was $2 to 296. St. Joseph, Missouri, 220 to 330 a pound. New Holland um, in Pennsylvania, it seems like they're developing a, a, a quite a good market for goats that weigh above 60 pounds. Um, a lot of places here in Missouri, if I took a kid and it weighed 70 pounds, I would lose sig significant amount of money um, per pound, where in New Holland, they're selling them 60 to 80 pound and 80 pound to 100 pound market, and they're still getting fairly good prices. Um, that comes out every month also in the Goat Rancher magazine, not that I'm pushing that. So really, if you think about it, Yvonne's got like a 10 goat per one cow equivalent. Um, <clears throat> goats can earn more than cattle. Um, another way is that you don't have to take your kids to the livestock auction. You can try to direct market your meat at home or to restaurants if you live near a city. I live an hour from Springfield, and it takes 15 scary, snaky minutes down a narrow dirt road in a hauler to get to our farm from Highway 60. We tried valiantly to market USDA graded goat meat cuts from our freezer. Tried advertising, put it on a website, it just didn't, it, it, we didn't have the demand. And I wasn't going to drive to Kansas City or St. Louis um, to try to sell the goat meat. Also, um, we only had about 40 kids at the time that we were processing. And our processor was charging $75 per goat for a USDA inspected. It didn't matter if it was one goat in a bag or if it was all ground. Um, if you live near an urban city metro area, um, I would definitely give it a try, but you're going to have to um, find a processor that you can work with, and especially if you're going to work with a restaurant or food truck, you're going to have to have a constant supply. And that's where Oh, Yvonne, don't sell kids for slaughter, uh, doe kids, because we need those extra goats. So, Yvonne's three S's, which are not the three S's that come to my mind when I have neighbor uh, dogs run in my fields. Um, food, shelter, and safety from predators. This is where a lot of your infrastructure and your, your costs are going to be. If you laid out 200 head for 100 goats, 
I would say if you had these other things kind of taken care of, your goats would probably pay for themselves in two years if all was working well for you. Yvonne has come up with getgoating.com. It's a nonprofit clearinghouse. It's not quite gone live yet. Um, what she sees now that she's unable to physically get out and market her goats, she's now like at Command Central at a computer. And she wants to get people together. Not that she's trying to cut out the middlemen of the sale barns and the auctions, but if she can connect goat breeders and goat kid producers from areas into um, and get them in contact with people who want the goat meat. Um, say you've got a buyer, a packer from Chicago who wants, whose name might be Gamal, who wants to come in and, Yvonne, I need 500 goats. I need them to weigh this much. And, you know, Yvonne can say through her website, you know, no problem. We can do this. We can get this. And it would just really help producers because if you knew before your kids were even born that you had a sales outlet for it. I mean, that, that's my ideal is to have a waiting list for kids, a waiting list for my Dexter calves. Then it would just like take all the, the stress off. Um, I had to ask her, I said, Yvonne, is this true? And she said, yes. I said, okay. It's your nonprofit. Um, I brought um, a copy, it's already been mentioned, of Yvonne's Meat Goat Handbook. There's um, papers if you want to take one. If you buy it from Yvonne, she will sign it for you and mail it to you. You can buy it cheaper at Amazon, but it won't be signed for you. Um, does anybody have any questions?